Hello everyone, what is depreciation as a tax shield? What is a tax shield altogether? This is what we will discuss in this short session. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great. You are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. What does that mean? It's an expense that reduces your taxable income without consuming cash. In other words, reducing your liability without paying out the cash. How does it work? So you need to understand first, what is depreciation? Well, depreciation is when a company purchases an asset, a vehicle, a building, a truck, an equipment, something that's gonna last several years. What's gonna happen is this, when you initially purchase this asset, it's an asset, it doesn't get deducted. Then in the next few years, five, seven, 10, depending on the asset, you will spread the cost of that asset over the life of that asset. So to, to illustrate it, we'll work an example with numbers, so it makes sense. Let's assume for the sake of illustration, you purchased a piece of machinery for $100,000. That's the cost, that's the asset. You assume this asset would last you for five years. Well, if we take 100,000 divided by five, we have a depreciation expense every year for 20,000. Now, how would that 20,000 of depreciation expense be used as a tax shield? Well, every year you will deduct $20,000 from your revenues. It reduces your taxable income. It reduces your tax liability by exactly how much? Well, it all depends on your tax rate. The higher your tax rate, the higher is the savings. So if your tax rate is 30% times 20,000 of depreciation expense, you saved yourself $6,000 per year. If your tax rate is 20% and you reduced your taxable income by 20,000, you saved $4,000. Well, if your tax rate is 50%, well, you saved $10,000 because 20,000 times 50% equal to 10,000. So what you did is you reduced your taxable income. That depreciation shielded, protected some taxable income from being taxed. How much? 20,000. What's the savings? 20,000 times whatever your tax rate is the amount of the saving. Another way to look at this depreciation tax shield, sometime we present it as expense net of tax. Let's forget about depreciation. Because depreciation is just an expense. It happens to be a non-cash expense. But any expense works as a tax shield. Any expense reduces your taxable income. So for the sake of illustration, I would use interest expense. Let's assume for a particular year, the company had $100,000 in interest expense. You, you paid to the bank $100,000 because you have various loans and you had to pay this interest expense. That's the bad news. The good news is this, because you paid $100,000 in interest expense, what's going to happen? Your taxable income will be reduced by 100,000, thus creating you some sort of a tax savings. How much is that tax savings? Well, you will take the amount that you paid, 100,000 times one minus the tax rate. For the sake of simplicity, uh, you know, we're gonna assume the tax rate equal to 
30%, so 100,000 times 1 minus 30% is 0.7. Your net cost is 70,000. Simply put, although you paid $100,000 in interest expense to the bank, you wrote them a check for 100,000. That's bad news. The good news is by writing them this check, you saved yourself 30,000 because 100,000 times 30%, that's $30,000 less in, tax, in, in taxes for you. In other words, to say it one more time in a different way, your expense net of tax is 70,000 because 100,000, the amount that you wrote to the bank, minus the 30,000 you saved by writing that check, 100,000 minus 30,000, gave you a net expense of 70,000. So depreciation as a tax shield means what? It means you shielded some income from taxation. You reduce your taxable income. And depreciation is great because you don't actually write a check for depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. But the point I was trying to make toward the end is any expense is a form of a tax shield in a sense that it's going to reduce your taxable income. So every time you have a business expense, you paid the business expense, it reduced your taxable income. So you could always say, for example, if I purchased a computer for my business, just for the sake of illustration, $1,000, I bought a tablet. Well, if my tax rate is 20%, that tablet cost me $800. How? I paid $1,000. I paid Apple $1,000. That $1,000 reduced my income by $1,000. It saved me 200 on my taxes, 1,000 minus 200 plus in savings equal to that tablet netted me. I saved, not netted me, I saved, yes, it netted to be $800, the net cost of that tablet. So I saved $200 in taxes. This is what we mean by a tax shield. How is that used in accounting? Depreciation as a tax shield used in accounting when you are doing capital budgeting. When you're doing capital budgeting, capital budgeting, you look at your cash flow. So if you have a depreciation expense, depreciation expense is a non-cash. It reduces your income without, without reducing your cash, and it gives you a tax savings. That's what you need to know for depreciation as a tax shield, tax shield in general, or your expense net of tax. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice, more lectures that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA exam candidate. Invest in yourself. Good luck. And of course, stay safe.